Hello, my name is Annabel Harsing and I'm a professor, research mentor and staff development lead at Middlesex University London. Welcome to this presentation on improving your research profile, reputation and impact. This presentation consists of eight sections that can be watched as freestanding videos or as part of a long playlist. This is the second part of the presentation in which I will explain what impact is and why you should care about it. Now, if you've missed the first part of this presentation with the rationale behind the presentation, you may want to go back to that first. This is the second part of the presentation in which we look in more detail at what impact is. After these two introductory sections, we'll focus more on metrics and citation impact for a few sessions. I will give you a crash course on data sources and metrics and I will explain how you can find your own citation record and that of others in the Publisher Parish software. Then I will explain how engaging in academic behaviour that is both ethical and professional can help you improve both your citations and other forms of impact. The next three sessions then will all be about research profiles and the use of social media. We will talk about the importance of creating good research profiles and why you would want to use or not use social media in academia. As this, this might all be a little bit overwhelming, I will then provide you with a clear seven step process that you can use to improve your reputation and impact. I will then finish off uh, with some evidence showing that sharing on social media is effective and some tips on what to do if you still don't know where to start. So when we're talking about impact, do you know what we're talking about? Well, that all depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to a bibliometrician or most academics at research intensive universities, they will tell you it's all about citations. If you talk to an educator, they will tell you it's all about your impact on the student experience. If you talk to someone who is a university manager in the UK and involved in the government's evaluation of universities, they will tell you it's about ref impact, which is really about external societal impact rather than citation impact. So to help you clarify these different perspectives, you might find this summary of different forms of impact helpful. The first is academic impact. This refers to the implications of our research for other researchers and is generally measured by citations. I'm not going to engage in a long discussion about whether or not that's an appropriate measure of academic impact as we could spend the rest of the presentation talking about that. It's a bit like democracy. It might not be ideal, but it's the best system we have. Second, we shouldn't forget that we all have a tremendous impact on our students. In any good university, research will feed into the classroom and students will benefit from research-led teaching. It's not easy to measure this in concrete terms, but that doesn't mean it's not important. If you're interested in finding out whether your, your, your work is used in the classroom, I can really recommend having a look at Open Syllabus Explorer. I've included a blog post on this on this slide. So these are the two key functions of a university, research and teaching. But there's also a third function, external engagement. And this is the kind of impact that is measured in the UK REF, which is defined as an effect on change or benefit to the economy, society, culture, public policy or services, health, the environment or quality of life beyond academia. These kind of impacts are captured by the last three categories on this slide. First, impact on practice. Is our, use, is our research used in industry and business? In some fields, for instance, this could be measured by patents or business startups. But more generally, we're simply talking about whether our, use, our research has an impact for the economy and business. So working for a university that focuses on applied research this is obviously a very important area for us. Second, our research may impact on public policy. Our research might influence public policy. Um, my, many of our, our colleagues at Middlesex are doing research that directly or indirectly influenced or has influenced uh, government or non-governmental policy making. Finally, and more broadly, impact for society as a whole. 
I'm a social scientist, as many of those watching the, you, the, this video might be. And uh, as social scientists, we do not necessarily save lives, as, as, as life scientists might do. But we can change norms and values through our research or improve people's living conditions. As you know, this, this is a presentation on how to improve your research profile and reputation. So I won't focus on teaching. There are other fora to learn about that. In my presentation, I will focus primarily on impact on the academic community rather than external impact. However, all the suggestions I make on how to improve your academic impact can also be applied to external impact. If you're looking for more specific guidance on external impact, I suggest you attend sessions in your own faculty, as this is often quite discipline specific. In the Faculty of Business and Law, for instance, we've started impact and action sessions this year in which academics present how their research has external impact and the challenges they are facing with that. If you are unsure about anything in this area, your Deputy Dean Research and Knowledge Exchange and your faculty can help you with this. Also ensure you pay close attention to any uh, communications from Mark Gray, our Provost Chancellor Knowledge Transfer and a whiz in anything related to knowledge exchange. Middlesex is also a member of the University Policy Engagement Network and you will get messages coming through about that as well. Okay, let's turn to academic impact then, which as I said is typically measured by citations. So why would you even care about this, you might ask? Well, I would say, why on earth would you publish if nobody cites your work? Not publishing is a bit like being mute, but not being cited is like talking without anyone talking back. It's very much a one-way conversation. Now, I know that I've sometimes compared academics to artists and that we're also driven by a passion to independently realize our own visions. And yes, there are artists who just care about expressing themselves. They, they don't care whether um, anyone even looks at their work. But I think even these artists would prefer it if someone engaged with their work. And it's the same with academics. Academic research should really contribute to academic discourse. And, and, and citations are simply a part of that discourse. They're a signal that other academics are talking back to you. Well. You might well say, well, I, I know my, my work is reaching students and managers and policy makers, so that means you're having an impact on teaching or the kind of external impact we just talked about. And both of them are really important, but these audiences are usually not our primary audience if we're publishing in academic journals. And if they were our primary audience, we would be publishing in very different outlets and uh, outlets that they would actually read. I can assure you that it's not common for students and those outside academia to read academic journals. Um, so first of all, I think you should care about citations because they are a signal that your research is contributing to the academic discourse. But why exactly would you want to know whether your work is cited? Well, in a more instrumental sense, it might be important for any type of research evaluation, tenure or promotion application, or even a yearly performance appraisal. Citations are a signal that your work is recognized as being relevant by other academics, and that's important. But more importantly, citations tell you who is building on the work that you have done. And it's tremendously exciting to see how others are using your research. When you start out in academia, you're excited to, to publish and to see your name in print. And, and if you are not, I'm sure your parents might be. However, that excitement fades after a while. And personally, I was far more excited about my first citations as they would told me that people were actually reading my work and found it useful. And through reading how other people use your work, you might also get some new ideas uh, for your research yourself. And finally, some of the people citing your work might well be future collaborators, as it, it, it's clear they're interested in your work. And as such, they might want to collaborate with you to take the research agenda forward. And on a side note, I know very well that many citations are very superficial. In fact, one of my first articles, or actually my first article in, in uh, 1995, was about how referencing errors can create myths in academia. At the bottom of the slide, I've included a link to an update of that article, which has some, um, some clear referencing guidelines. 
However, even though many citations might be superficial, in general, citations do signal that academics are truly engaging with and building on your work. And finally, it's, it's a nice ego boost. As I said earlier, um, the initial excitement about publishing fades, but most of us would really like to know whether anyone is reading our work and, and engaging with it, and citations are an indication of that. And yes, again, I do know that people sometimes cite your work without reading it properly, in some cases even with hilarious results, as you can read in the article that I've linked on this slide, but most of the time they will have read your work. For all of the links you see on the slides, if you have access to the slides, you can just click on them and go to the relevant page. If you don't, just Google uh, the, the, the name of uh, the blog post and maybe add the name of my website, www.housing.com. Uh, and it will be among the first results. Now, I hope you enjoyed this part of the presentation and you feel you know a little bit more about the different forms of impact and about why citations are important. In the next section, I'll give you a crash course on data sources and metrics. If you're watching this presentation from outside Middlesex University, I wish you all the best uh, in building your own research profile, reputation and impact. If you're watching this presentation in preparation for a flipped classroom session at Middlesex University, I very much look forward to seeing you in one of the sessions, but do make sure you come prepared with your questions.